She heard it playing on the Vox. It was the song he had sung to her all those summers ago, when they were but young in a desperate war, and her golden hair fell softly across his lap. But it was different, corrupted, slowed. Distorted bass of stretched out notes crackled between the aching rhythm, the sweet poison of nostalgia soured by an indulgent lento. Between the broken music was discordant noise, an artificial extracted memory of static expressions and shimmering light. She saw his face, but it crackled and buzzed, the space between the atoms fizzling into a desert mirage. The door to the next room opened, and from the threshold blazed a brilliant white light. It shone with the purity and innocence of a thousand first loves, burning against her skin and blackening her lips with the taste of foul sulfur. He stood bathed in that illumination, his body shining gold, flesh melding with the holy light. He reached out his arms, and she stepped towards him, feeling her power armor clatter away from her body as she fell into his embrace. How can this be? She asked, her voice discordant and shuddering. He smiled, holding her head against his breast. Shush now, he said. Let it be. She wept, golden hair blending with the searing light, porcelain skin searing red as her soul burned. She felt her flesh melt against the heat of his body. I'm sorry, she whispered. She lifted her head from his chest staring past the light into the ugly, fetid darkness that lay beyond. There she saw a skeleton sitting in faded rags upon a rusting golden throne. But you're not him. It does not matter. She smiled, breathing in the incense of her melting skin. It does. I wish it didn't. But it does. No. Ave. Imperator. She pulled the pin on the crack grenade and felt her body shatter into a thousand pieces of silver glass. Matthias knelt on the cold stone of the chapel, his shaved head bowed, his forehead bled where he had carved the vertical slit, mark of St. Francis, with a flensing knife. For Matthias had swore that as long as he drew breath, the wound would never be permitted to heal. The blood was wet and warm down the ridge of his nose, drip, drip, dripping against the floor. Ave, Imperato, he finished, unclasping his hands from the shape of the Aquila. Acolyte. He turned quickly to address the Inquisitor, rising merely so he could kneel once more at his master's feet. The Inquisitor was unreadable, their face hidden behind the death mask of Saint Sophia, the shape of their body concealed beneath golden carapace and heavy purple cloaks. Matthias was not even sure of the Inquisitor's gender, their voice was modulated by miracles of the Mechanicus, made to be something it was not. My lord. Rise, faithful servant. I have need of you. Matthias rose, but his head was still bowed. His blood continued to drip on the floor, inches from the Inquisitor's armoured boots. I am your servant, my lord. She may be a saint, Matthias, the Inquisitor said. Their voice briefly rose an octave, as if the Omnissiah's gifts could not quite conceal the fervor of their excitement. Canoness Lucia said as much. Matthias felt the contagion of the Inquisitor's excitement send flutters through his own breast. And she is alive, my lord. Yes, a living saint, potentially. The Inquisitor began walking, gesturing Matthias to follow. But she single-handedly banished a herald belonging to the Dark Prince. Where all others failed, she had faith enough to deny the monster's sorcerous deceits and save her sisters from perfidy and damnation. But my lord... You wonder why a saint would need your help. The truth is this. Through her resistance was nothing less than miraculous. She did not banish the foul abomination. She drew the demon into her own soul, like a healer sucking a venom from a wound. Matthias stopped in his tracks. Then she is not a saint, my lord. She is possessed. Careful, acolyte. That determination is not yours to make. Do not soil a lifetime of service to the god emperor with the potential of heresy. The acolyte bowed his head. I will destroy myself, my lord, he said, his jaws clenched. 
I will cut off my lying tongue and cleanse my heresy with fire and blood. He thought he heard a smile in the Inquisitor's voice. There is no need for that, Matthias. I forgive your sins by the authority of the Holy Ordos. Matthias gasped, falling to his knees. He felt the burden of sin lift from his soul and knew it for what it was. A miracle. My lord. Rise, servant. Rise. My lord. Matthias hurried to his feet, and the Inquisitor continued. She is possessed, and yet she still lives. Her body unsullied by rot or mutation. It has been two days, Matthias. That is no small miracle in itself. The demon's presence should have annihilated her mortal shell in a matter of hours. And what must I do, my lord? You know very well, faithful servant. You will exorcise the demon from her soul. But you must spare her life, Matthias. Do you understand? I understand, my lord, but the demon. Such unclean spirits are spiteful when wrenched away from flesh. You will do what you can. The Inquisitor paused. I do not call upon you often, Matthias. Your work is holy, but it will destroy you. I spare you the petty monsters so that your soul can be unsullied for greater callings. Do you understand? I... my lord. I mean to say that you have my confidence. I have known many exorcists, and you have my confidence. Matthias felt tears spill from his eyes. It mingled with loose strains of blood that spilled from his forehead, running in crimson rivers down his cheeks. Thank you, my lord, he said, feeling his soul ache. Thank you. The Inquisitor reached out and brushed away a bloody tear as it leaked from Matthias' eye. It is time, Aconite, they said. To your work. They kept her in the Abbey of the Bloody Stem, burly sisters of battle, their muscular frames seeming incongruously big for their simple robes, stared at Matthias as he passed. Their faces were warlike, hostile. They are suspicious of males, the canoness remarked. Most of the males they meet are the enemy. Among a sisterhood of giants, canoness Lucia was a behemoth, a mountain of muscle and scar tissue. Most of her face had been mutilated by Xenos acid, the flesh having bubbled away and healed in bumpy, rubbery tissue. Unlike her subordinates, she was wearing her power armor, the plates painted in a pure, gleaming white. A double-handed power sword was strapped to her back, a weapon as long as Matthias himself. Only through the luminem-motivated fiber bundles of her armor could such a weapon be wielded effectively and Matthias thought it would be a fine thing to see the canoness in battle, zealous prayers upon her lips. What about the men of the Astra Militarum? Canoness Lucia smirked, the lumpy flesh of her face shifting awkwardly. I misspoke. Most of the males they meet are either the enemy or faithless cowards. I shall pray that I fall into neither category. Don't pray. The God Emperor has nothing to do with it. Be loyal and be brave. It is simple enough. Matthias concealed a smile. As you say, Canoness. Sister Isabella is confined in the catacombs. The Canoness said, briskly changing the topic. Sisters Bianca and Sophia stand guard at the end of the hall. They are two of my Celestians. They will not falter. What other securities are in place? The entrance to the hall is protected by plasteel glass. Its door is accessible only by biometric scanner, admitting access to myself and my Celestians. However, you should know that technologies have been observed to fail in the presence of the... abomination. Hmm. The hall is lined with purity seals, replaced daily. The door to the room itself is locked by mechanical key and is protected by pentagramic warding provided by the Holy Orders. Within, Sister Isabella is restrained to a bed by ceramide chains and she is forced each morning to ingest a blessed wafer. There are many icons of faith in the room, which are also replaced daily. 
Why are they replaced? The canoness fixed Matthias in a glare. The demon likes to play with them. When they are damaged or tampered with, they are replaced and reconsecrated. On which side of the barrier did the Celestians stand? The inside. I would be grateful if they were moved to the exterior, Canoness. If you'd like. They'd take longer to reach you, though, if it came to it. I have the strictest instructions that Sister Isabella must survive. I would rather die than risk a stray bolt round killing her. Who replaces the icons and blessed wafers? I do, or one of my Celestians. It spoke to me once. It said it was waiting for the Inquisition. I didn't reply. And what about Sister Isabella? She's spoken a few times, as if in a fever. I don't think she knew I was there. What did she say? She was reciting passages from the Catechisms of Sebastian Thor. What is her physical condition? Consistent with the fever and her injuries. How long have Sisters Bianca and Sophia been stationed at their post? At present time, six hours. My Celestians are rotated regularly to prevent fatigue. Anything else? Not at this time, Canoness. Thank you. Are you available to me in the event of further questions? The Canoness glowered. Oh, I'll be here, Ecolite. I'll be here until this is finished, one way or another. Matthias nodded. Then, let's begin. Matthias waited for the plasteel glass door to open. His shadow flickered oddly off the ancient statuary and dusty tombs of the catacombs. When the door finally clicked and swung outwards, a chill breeze brushed against his robes. The light of his candle fluttered wildly. The Emperor protects, he muttered under his breath. The two Celestians exited from behind the barrier. Each towered above Matthias the pure white of their power armor seeming a burnished orange against the struggling fires. Their bolt guns were drawn and pressed against their chest plates. Chunky, murderous looking weapons, capable of turning a man to giblets in a matter of seconds. Matthias held his head up high and strode through the door. He heard it hiss shut behind him. The walls leading to Sister Isabella's room were lined with purity seals. Scraps of vellum covered in scrolls of devotional writing. Most seemed burned, peeling back towards their nails, the parchment blackened and ashen. On others, the ink had run, staining the paper with blots of blue and purple. Gracious Emperor, Matthias said, watching his breath plume in condensed steam against icy air. Our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image, through thy throne on blessed terror." He heard a rasping feminine laugh from up ahead, and made the sign of the Aquila. When he stepped forward, his footsteps echoed loudly against the cold stone. He reached the door. Pentagrammic warding was etched into the metal, unfurling across the surface like the roots of a great tree. He could feel the devotion behind the symbols, sensing a complex pattern in the etchings, but his eyes swam to look on them, and he did not tarry. Recovering a large metal key from the folds of his robes, he made his way inside. Matthias's first impression was of gleaming silver and gold. Dozens, Perhaps hundreds of Aquilas and other holy symbols were affixed to the otherwise bare walls, flashing from the light of guttering candles. But his vision soon focused on the bed and the woman who lay upon it. The sister was dressed in plain, soiled robes. Huge ceramide chains were locked about her wrists and ankles, connecting to bolts in the stone floor. Sister Isabella was wide-shouldered and powerfully built, but her strength had gone to waste, muscles collapsing on themselves and cheeks hollowing out to gaunt, feverish chasms. The black dye in her hair had faded to an unassuming chestnut brown, falling out in chunks that littered a sweat-stained pillow. Rolls of bandages were wrapped tight around her torso, brown where the blood had bled and dried into the fabric. Matthias's nose wrinkled. He approached his charge, 
setting down a small briefcase on the end table. The sister writhed in a fever, muttering scripture from parched, cracking lips. Matthias opened the briefcase. Within was a brass aquila, blackened and charred, sitting beside a vial of holy water. The acolyte reverently reached out with his left hand and gripped the aquila tight. With his other hand, he took up the vial, popping off the cork with his thumb. He looked back to Sister Isabella. He had no doubt that she was possessed, but there was no sign of it on her person. She was untainted by mutation. She was simply a powerfully built woman, a sister of battle, convalescing from terrible injuries in a dingy bed in a dingy room. In the name of the Emperor, Matthias began. Our God and Sovereign, strengthened by the intercession of the Sigilite Malkador the Hero, of Blessed Sanguinius the First Martyr, of the Blessed Primarchs Gilliman and Dawn and all the saints. Half covering the open vial with his thumb, he flicked holy water onto the woman. She started, mumbling something incoherent as her limbs shifted and locked into place. And powerful in the holy authority of the Ordos Inquisitorius, we confidently undertake to repulse the attacks and deceits of the warp. The Emperor arises, his enemies are scattered, and those who hate him flee before him. He held up the charred Aquila, holding it over the prostrate body of Sister Isabella. She contorted in sudden snapping movements, still murmuring half-formed words beneath her breath. As smoke is driven away, so are they driven. As wax melts before the fire, so the wicked perish at the presence of God. Matthias could feel the temperature building in the room. He continued unafraid. Behold, the Aquila of the God Emperor. Flee bands of enemies. The Lion of the First Legion of Terror, the offspring of God, hath conquered. He saw the cracked lips of Sister Isabella twitch into a sly smile and raised his voice. May thy judgment, Emperor, descend upon us, as great as our devotion to thee. As her lips curled back, he could see rotten, festering teeth within the sister's mouth. The demon had begun to reveal itself, compelled to spiritual battle. We drive you from us, whoever you may be. Unclean spirits, all warp-spawned powers, all infernal invaders, all wicked legions, assemblies and sects. Sister Isabella's eyes shot open, and she began reciting the same words alongside him. But her voice was not her own, masculine and seductive. In, In the name and by the power of our Lord God Emperor, may you be snatched away and driven from the Ecclesiarchy, and from the souls made to the image of God and redeemed by the precious blood of divine Sanguinius. Most cunning serpent, the demon shouted with the sister's lips. You shall no more dare to deceive the human race, persecute the Ministorum, torment the Emperor's elect, and sift them as wheat. The Most High God Emperor commands you, Matthias yelled. He with whom, in your great insolence, you still claim to be equal. <sighs> equal. I am no thief. The Emperor who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the Imperial Truth. I did not steal from old knight. I am no thief. The Emperor commands you. The Emperor commands you. The Emperor commands you. False. 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 The Primarchs. The Emperor's word made flesh commands you. Which Primarchs, Matthias? Horus. Logar. Magnus. They who, to save our race outdone through your envy, humbled themselves, becoming obedient even unto death. They who have built his church on the firm rock and declared that the gates of the warp shall not prevail against her, because they will dwell with her all days even to the end of holy terror. It is Logar that dwells within your church, fool. The sacred sign of the Aquila commands you, as does also the power of the mysteries of the Holy Ordos. The glorious Ecclesiarch, the Divine Servant, commands you. They who by their humility and from the first moment of their ascension crushed your proud head. Apostate Ecclesiarch, wretched Vandire. His descendants are no better, despised by your own angels. The faith of the holy saints Macarius and Thor and of the other saints commands you. Macarius died in his own pus, and his empire crumbled into ash. 
the blood of the martyrs and the pious intercession of all the saints command you. Mutants and witches all. He knows, Matthias. Gilliman knows. Thus, cursed dragon, and you diabolical legions, we adjure you by the eternal god emperor, by the true god, by the holy god, by the god who so loved humanity that he gave us his sons, that every soul believing in him might not perish, but endure everlasting. Stop deceiving human creatures and pouring out to them the poison of eternal damnation. Stop harming the Ministorum and hindering her liberty. Hypocrite! Liar! Be gone, Warp Thing, inventor and master of all deceit, enemy of man's salvation. Your church is despised even by him, disloyal wretch. Your church belongs to us. Give place to him in whom you have found none of your works. Give place to the one, holy golden throne on terror given to him at the price of his blood. He screams for death! Stoop beneath the all-powerful hand of the Emperor. Tremble and flee when we invoke the holy and terrible names of his sons. These names which cause hell to tremble. These names to which the virtues, powers and dominations of the Imperium are humbly submissive. This name which the cherubim and saints praise unceasingly repeating, Holy, holy, holy is the God Emperor, the master of humankind. O oh, carrion god! O oh, false emperor! O oh, emperor, hear my prayer! And let me cry come unto thee! She is no saint! May the Lord be with thee and with thy spirit! Enough! Matthias went flying through the air, landing heavily against the wall. He grimaced, feeling blood drip down the back of his head and stain the nape of his neck. Sister Isabella was sitting upright in the bed, the ceramide chains pulled taut against her wrists. Aquilas and holy icons had fallen to the ground or rotated, individual nails and bolts unscrewing from the wall and leaving behind blackened imprints of sulfurous taint. Matthias, my darling, the sister spoke. The sharpness in her voice was gone, replaced by gentle fatherly tones. We need not pretend with one another. This woman is not a saint. She is weak. She has betrayed all her vows. She has enjoyed the flesh of men, sweat, mingling with sweat, excretions mingling with excretions, and I have tasted them all. Matthias blinked, trying to regain his senses. He felt groggy, dizzy. I am at home in this rotten soul. The sister continued. I find purchase among the slits and crevices of her sins and lusts. What saint would house the likes of me, Matthias? What saint would open her legs to my temptations and let me slither into the reeking orifice of her soul? Matthias staggered to his feet, reaching for his blackened aquila. The vial of holy water had slipped from his grasp, spilling its contents on the floor. He swayed, drunk on concussion, but his conviction was strong. Let us pray, he said. Matthias! Matthias, my darling, there is no need for these pretenses. Emperor of humanity, Emperor of the Imperium, Emperor of the Astartes, Emperor of the Primarchs, Emperor of Ecclesiarchs, Emperor of Prophets, Emperor of Saints, Emperor of Martyrs, Emperor of Confessors, Emperor of Sororitas. Sister Isabella writhed and fell back against the bed. Emperor who has power to give life after death and rest after work, because there is no other worthy God than thee, and there can be no other. For thou art the creator of the Imperium entire, visible and invisible, of whose reign there shall be no end. The ceramite chains rattled as the sister shuddered and contorted, her face grimacing as if under the screws. We humbly prostrate ourselves before thy glorious majesty, and we beseech thee to deliver us thy power from all the tyranny of the infernal spirits, from their snares, their lies, and their furious wickedness. You are incorrigible, my darling. Deign, O Emperor, to grant us thy powerful protection and to keep us safe and sound. Captain Arnold Lovell of the Cadian 383rd! The sister shrieked. If you don't believe me, seek the proof. 
We beseech thee through the God Emperor, our Lord, Imperiatorus Absolutum. The sister cried out in pain, her head pressed against the sweat-stained pillow. From the snares of the warp, deliver us, O Emperor, that thy ecclesiarchy may serve thee for ten millennia more. We beseech thee to hear us, that thou may crush down all the enemies of thy ministorum. We beseech thee to hear us. Matthias' his shoulders slumped as he reached the end of the prayer, his back slick with sweat. He stepped forwards, ready to begin the rite anew, but he saw that the sister was unconscious, driven to exhaustion by the onslaught. The acolyte sighed. He was exhausted too. Taking one last glance at the fallen icons, the broken sister and the spilled holy water, Matthias left the room and locked it behind him. Well? The canoness stared down at Matthias, her practiced eyes taking in the thin dribble of blood snaking down his neck from the back of his head. The acolyte's eyes were unfocused from a minor concussion, his face creased with fatigue, blood still oozed from the slit carved into his forehead. The demon is strong, Matthias replied. He felt his shoulders slump at the thought of going into battle against the abomination once more. But I have drawn it out. It writhes before the majesty of the god Emperor and suffers to hear the holy scriptures. He made the sign of the Aquila with his hands. I have faith, and faith is stronger than any evil this galaxy may throw at us. Indeed. Canoness Lucia agreed. Yet I would feel better if you had the protection of my bolter. Our ornaments are as holy as your prayers, Acolyte. Matthias smiled. I do not doubt the sacredness of your weapons and armor, Canoness. But I am under the strictest instruction. Sister Isabella must survive. Though your bolt gun is holy, it is indiscriminate in its rage. He paused, his eyes narrowing. Forgive me, Canoness, but wasn't it you that suggested Sister Isabella was a saint? My master took great notice of your testimony. The Canoness sighed. It troubles me that my words count for so much. I am a crusader, not a scholar. You are a canoness? Yes. And Sister Isabella performed the miracle. But then... But then? The canoness's eyes were icy blue. But then she died. She recites the catechisms of Thor. Her lips move, her tongue wags, and such words come forth. She still lives, Canoness. It is determined by inquisitorial writ. The Canoness smiled faintly, scar tissue shifting, and shook her head. But that doesn't mean that I don't desire to end this sordid matter and put a bolt round in her head. The demon hides in her flesh. I would flush it out. Matthias sighed. When did you decide that Sister Isabella was gone? There was no particular moment, Acolyte. With each hour and day, the demon took deeper root. If Sister Isabella is a saint, how can the demon stand her flesh? The answer is simple. She is dead. Matthias nodded, stifling another sigh. The canoness's words spoke to his own private doubts. But against the demon there was no room for such doubt. Only in the burning fire of certainty could the monster be excised. There is someone I need to know more about, he said. A captain in the Astra Militarum, Arnold Lovell of the Cadian 383rd. Could you help me? The canoness nodded briskly. I'll request his monitorum file. But don't expect too much. The monitorum can be sloppy with the details. It is probably nothing. Matthias said. He smiled politely. But I am grateful, Canoness. Matthias knelt at the front of the chapel, staring up at the beautiful stained glass window of the living saint, Celestine. Colourful radiance shone through a halo around her head, her eyes seeming to gleam with an inner fire that could not be explained by the stained glass alone. Forgive me my sin, Celestine, Matthias whispered. 
A heavy burl of guilt had settled in his stomach that no amount of brutal flagellation could dissolve. Blood poured liberally from his forehead, his back black and purple from where he had beaten himself with knotted rope. I have faith, the acolyte said to the glass. In the god emperor, master of mankind, my faith is absolute. There is no room for doubt. And yet, he muttered beneath his breath, eyes lowering. To defeat this demon, I must have faith in another. I must have faith in Sister Isabella. He looked up once more at the stained glass. When did you know that you were a saint, Celestine? When did others know? He fell quiet as the door to the chapel banged open, listening to the heavy footfalls of the canoness. He clasped his hands together in an aquila, silently begging for the guidance of the saints, silently begging for certainty in a sea of doubt. I have a copy of the Monitorum file, the canoness announced. I can read it to you if you'd like. It is relatively brief. Please. Arnold Lovell volunteered for service in the year 989M41 on Cadia, aged 9. Completed officer training in the year 990M41. Made second lieutenant of 2nd platoon, Blue Company of the Cadian 383rd, under the supervision of 1st Lieutenant Leah Montanus. Shipped to the Othello front in the year 990M41, reaching the war zone in the year 992M41. Field promotion to first lieutenant in the same year. Commendations for duty. Made captain in the year 993 M41 of Blue Company of the Cadian 383rd. Killed in action in the year 999 M41 on the world of Hazaroth's despair. Matthias frowned, still staring at the depiction of Saint Celestine. Is Hazaroth's despair in the Othello front? Yes. As it happens, I know the world well. Our mission took part in that war, helping to destroy the Magisters of Kel. I presume that Sister Isabella was also there? Yes. It would have been her first war. She was a novitiate. Now, will you tell me what this is all about? Matthias sighed. He drove the fingernails into his palms to make a bloody aquila. Could she have met this man? Different squads were assigned to different companies of the Astro Militarum. But I remember them being Cadian. The 383rd sounds plausible enough. I don't recall exactly. And it is possible that Sister Isabella's squad was assigned to Blue Company. Should I ask? No, Matthias replied sharply. His tone softened. Thank you, but no canoness. There is no need to check. Put the matter out of your mind, please. Easier said than done. I ask that you try, Canoness. Forgive me. For what? For asking you these foolish questions. Please, they are nothing. The Canoness barked a laugh. <laughs> Don't worry, Acolyte. I have many things on my mind and I'm a simple soldier. I'll forget about this soon enough. Matthias listened to the sound of her stomping away and bowed his head. In the name of the Emperor, our God and Sovereign, strengthened by the intercession of the Sigilite Malkador the Hero, of Blessed Sanguinius the First Martyr, of the Blessed Primarchs Gilliman and Dawn, and all the saints, the faithful Acolyte returns. The sister hissed. The holy icons on the walls had been replaced, fresh aquilas hammered into cold stone by resolute hands. The scorch marks had been scrubbed away, the acolyte's blood mopped up. And powerful in the holy authority of the Ordos Inquisitorius, we confidently undertake to repulse the attacks and deceits of the warp. The Emperor arises, his enemies are scattered and those who hate him flee before him. He returns. But what is this? He brings something with him. As smoke is driven away, so are they driven. As wax melts before the fire, so the wicked perish at the presence of God. Ah, uh, yes. I know.
know exactly what he brings with him. Matthias gritted his teeth, holding aloft his charred icon. Behold the Aquila of the God Emperor. Flee bands of enemies. The Lion of the First Legion of Terror, the offspring of God, has conquered! The sister laughed, a rasping death rattle that shivered down Matthias' spine. May thy judgment, Emperor, descend upon us, as great as our devotion to thee. It is doubt. I do not doubt! Matthias snapped, flicking holy water over the sister's face. Even as the skin around her mouth bubbled and churned, a long forked tongue lapped up the moisture, heat rising in clouds of sulfuric steam. Oh, I know the stench of doubt, my darling. I know all the stenches of your race. I know the doubt, and the madness, and the lust, and I delight in them all. Silence, demon! The sister grinned, showing festering rotten teeth. Do I detect the stench of lust upon your breath, Acolyte? Is that why you punish yourself with knot and blade? To drive out the ache from your wounded soul? You know nothing of me! Or maybe that stench on your breath is what remains of your passion. Is that why you hurt yourself? Does it bring you pleasure betwixt the pain? You disgust me! <laughs> <laughs> it does you no good to hold on to these frustrations, Matthias. You can take her if you like. I will hold her still for you. Spawn of the warp! Silence! You must have thought about it. Young Captain Lovell, his hands exploring her virgin flesh. Come closer, my darling. Come closer and follow in the gallant captain's footsteps. The chains rattled as the sister thrusted, the ceramite straining beneath an unholy, muscular strength. The stench of rotting meat filled the air, sending the acolyte gagging as the sister laughed louder and louder. We drive you from us, whoever you may be. Unclean spirits, all warp-spawned powers, all infernal invaders, all wicked legions, assemblies, and sects. Holy Acolyte! The sister screamed. Save me! Kill me! Matthias shook his head, his voice increasingly desperate. In the name and by the power of our Lord God Emperor, may you be snatched away and driven from the Ecclesiarchy and from the souls made to the image of God and redeemed by the precious blood of divine Sanguinius! His eyes widened as all the nails and bolts unscrewed from the wall, each icon and aquila dropping in one clattering bang. Most cunning serpent, you shall no more dare to deceive the human race, persecute the Ministorum, torment the Emperor's elect, and sift them as wheat. Please, please kill me, save me, make it stop. The Most High God Emperor commands you. He with whom, in your great insolence, you still claim to be equal. Matthias stepped back as the bed rose into the air. In the near distance he could hear klaxons ringing, the smell of smoke rising to the back of his nose. The Emperor, who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the Imperial Truth. The chains bolted to the stone floor snapped free, whirling about the floating bed in a dervish of flailing ceramite. One struck Matthias directly to the arm, breaking the bone and sending his charred Aquila clattering to the ground. He screamed in pain. Don't stop the prayer, the sister shrieked. Don't stop! Please, don't stop! Matthias thought he could hear pleasure behind her screams. He staggered back, his sight blinded with shooting pain. Behind he could hear the door rattling, held shut by the internal latch. Matthias couldn't remember fixing the latch in the first place. The prayer. The prayer. The Emperor commands you. The Emperor commands you. The Emperor commands you. The bed slammed back against the ground as the door burst open, and two Celestians charged into the room. 
As they brought up their bolt guns, time seemed to slow, and Matthias could see the abject terror glee in the sister's eyes. Don't shoot! He shouted. Don't shoot! He jumped to the boom of two bolter rounds. In perfect synchrony, each Celestian fell to the ground, their heads smoking ruins of pulped flesh and red mist. No! The door slammed shut. The sister rose from her bed, levitating in the air. Her flesh crawled with flowing maggots that writhed just beneath the surface, one wriggling up through her eye and dropping wetly to the ground. A terrible rot had overtaken her, pale skin decaying into a horrid, disgusting sheen of putrefaction green. Her eyes were bloodshot and swollen, almost popping in their sockets. Matthias stared at the nightmare before him, nausea pressing against his throat even as his body pulsed with evil sensation. Even in her state of rot, the sister's body was muscular and shapely, the curve of her hips sending pulses of aching pain through the wound in Matthias's forehead. Blood seeped from the gash, oozing and dribbling down the bridge of his nose, stinking of lust and sweat. The sister grinned. Behind her fetid teeth, Matthias could see thousands of tiny searching hairs at the back of her mouth, each tendril fluttering like hair follicles in a soft summer breeze. I shall make a bargain with you, Matthias, the sister said. Swear by the god emperor that you believe Sister Isabella a saint, and I shall leave this vessel for good. Swear by the god emperor that you will worship this treacherous strumpet, that you will whisper her name in the same breath as Celestine and Thor and Alicia and Macarius. Swear by the God Emperor that you do not doubt your master's word, that a saint may break her vows, that a saint may house a demon, that a saint can remain pure, despite the touch of the warp upon her. Swear by the God Emperor, and I shall be gone. I, I swear it, Matthias. Swear by the Holy Ordos and the Primarchs and the Saints. Swear by your Carrion God and your corrupt institutions and your rotting, reeking species. I can't! The sister's grin widened, the skin splitting around her mouth into ugly gashes of ripped flesh. Why ever not? Because she's not a saint! Matthias fell to his knees, sobbing against the stone. He shivered as he felt the touch of Sister Isabella upon his shoulder. No, my darling, she is not. The voice was deep and masculine, lined with contempt and amusement. But she might have been. Matthias shuddered as he felt the wet, hot breath of the demon in his ear. Congratulations, Acolyte. You have destroyed your first saint. No. No. Yes. But listen, my darling, the avenging angel comes. The canoness stared down at the prostrate form of the inquisitorial acolyte, lip turned up in disgust. The man had curled up into the fetal position, whimpering softly as he clutched his broken arm. She looked around the room, still paranoid for further threats. Her two-handed power sword still steamed with the foul ichor of the demon, the maggots of its insides having shriveled and burned against the blue-hot fury of her weapon. Her chestplate was dented from where the ceramite chain had struck her, the white of her helm blackened where sulfurous, purple fires had swept across her face. The decapitated head of Sister Isabella had rolled underneath the bed, leaving her rotted body decomposing beside the two headless Celestians. The canoness wished that she could remove sisters Bianca and Sophia from the room for proper burial, but it was too dangerous. The demon had touched their minds. Their bodies were corrupted, and they would burn with all the rest. They would all burn, all of them apart from this man, sobbing on the floor. Though the canoness felt nothing but contempt for the acolyte, he was not hers to punish. He was the Inquisitor's property. The canoness sheathed her blade and roughly pulled the acolyte to his feet. He cried out in fear and pain, but the canoness ignored him, shoving him out of the room and into the smouldering corridor. 
Canoness Lucia would return this acolyte to the Inquisition. He was their problem now, to be interrogated, executed, or else cast into the witch asylums to rot. The Canoness did not care, as long as she never saw the man again. Canoness. Sister Katerina prompted. The Celestian hefted up her heavy flamer, seeking permission. The Canoness nodded, and the Prometheum fire swept over the small room licking up at the bodies and melting the corrupted icons into molten metal. The body of Sister Isabella flaked away to ash, the contamination of her flesh scattered into grey flecks of useless carbon. Though the darkness will be rent by noise and flame, let not men's souls be broken in the crucible of war. <laughs>